my channel, Michelle Gay Science Teacher. In today's video, we're going to learn about Newton's third law of motion using rocket balloons. If you're interested, then stay tuned. So, what is force? Force is a push or a pull. Let's look at this marble I have here to demonstrate. So, Newton has three laws of motion. His first law of motion states, an object at rest stays at rest unless a force exerts upon it. So, if you notice, our marble is at rest. So, we're going to give it a little push to get it into motion. The second part of the first law of motion states, an object in motion stays in motion unless a force exerts upon it. So let's put this marble, we're gonna give it a push. And then we're going to stop it. Now, when the marble came to a stop, another force did exert upon it. And that force is friction. Friction slows or stops an object from moving. And goodness, thank goodness we have friction because if we didn't have friction, we would be slipping all over the place. That wouldn't be too much fun, would it? Who is Isaac Newton? Isaac Newton is a scientist from the mid 1600s. He discovered the law of gravity. He discovered that everything stays on earth and in place because everything is pulled by the force of gravity to the center of the earth. And that's why we're not out floating everywhere like we would do if we were in space. He also came up with his three laws of motion to explain how things work in motion and with forces. And did, have you taken the subject calculus before in high school? Well, if you have, guess who formulated that mathematics? Sir Isaac Newton. So, we're using things today in modern times that Isaac Newton discovered in the early 1600s. So now, we've talked about his first law of motion, and we've talked about force is a push or a pull, and we talked about the force of friction that slows things down. His third law of motion states, every action has an equal or opposite reaction. So let's look at my car. This car, I'm going to pull back and let go. Oops. So we have an equal and opposite reaction. I'm pulling back and let go. So now we see that force. In our next part where we explore, we're going to look at how rocket balloons use the third law of motion. Now it's time to explore. We're going to use rocket balloons to explain Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. For this experience, the materials you will need will be scissors, balloons, straws, a clothespin, a small cup, tape, some type of string. You can use fishing line, kite string, paper clips, and you will also need goggles. All right guys, for the next part of this video, my mom is gonna show you how to set up your own rocket balloons. And you'll see just how easy it is and how much fun you can have. Okay, so now we have our balloon blown up and I've taken a clothespin to uh, clamp the balloon so it will stay without uh, the air, losing the air out of it. I'm going to take some tape and tape the balloon to our straw. Okay. 
Okay, so this is the setup. So you want to have your string tied to two places. Now in the classroom, I usually take um, one string and str uh, string it from the top of the ceiling so that kids can see it going straight up and the difference. And we also uh, tie the string to two chairs or to, sometimes I'll use a filing cabinet and a chair as something else to, uh, in order for the kids to uh, have it going this way also. The other thing that you can do is have your students have a timer and calculate the time based on whether it's going vertical or horizontal and to see uh, what the difference is. Also, they need to look at how much air they put in the balloon and how much force is released. Now, when the balloon uh, gets ready to take off, we have this force uh, thrust that is going to thrust the balloon into motion. So we're going back to Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there's an equal reaction. So I'm going to demonstrate this first one and then come back and talk about um, the law of motion. All right, as you see, the balloon, the air went this way when the, when the balloon was released and the balloon went this way, equal and opposite reaction. Now, what would happen if we added something to the rocket? You know, when the space shuttle goes off, that shuttle is attached to two rocket boosters and then it is detached from it. Now, will the speed change if we add a payload? Let's try this part out next. Okay, so now I have a new setup. We have our rocket and we have now our payload. Our payload is just a simple clear cup. You can use a paper cup, um, whatever uh, thing you want to, uh, cup you can find. You don't want it to be too big um, to make it a payload uh, to carry. All right, so here's some questions you can ask. Will the speed change now that we've added a payload? Will the rocket go all the way to the end now that we have a payload? What changes will take place in this experiment versus the first one? We're still looking at Newton's law of motion. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So let's take a look. Oh, wow. So if you notice, the speed was the same. And also, if you, if you notice that um, when it came to the end, it kind of came back this time a little bit farther. So in this next part of our experiment, we're going to add some passengers to the payload. So now we're adding more mass. Will it change or not? Now I've added some passengers. I added two paper clips to the payload. Now we're going to see, will there be enough force to carry it all the way to the end. Have your students make predictions here uh, to decide what they think will happen. Also, they can add more paper clips uh, to their payload and continue to test after they test the first one. All right, and so now we're going to test out Newton's law of motion again. And this one also fits in with his second law of motion acceleration and mass. So let's take a check, let's take a look, sorry. All right, okay, so it did not go as fast as the other ones because now we've added more mass, more weight to the rocket and, um, but it was enough to get it from point A to point B, but at a slower rate. You can ask students, 
what could you do to increase the rate of speed with the extra mass added to the rocket, the payload and the passengers? Now that we've conducted this experiment and we've explored, you can continue to explain to students Newton's third law of motion and forces. Also, at this time, you can begin to elaborate a little bit farther and have students come up with real life examples of Newton's third law of motion besides rockets. They can do research on their own or you can show them videos uh, to extend their learning so that they can understand the concept of force and motion. I hope you like this video and I hope you subscribe to my channel, like and share. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. If you've done this experiment before, please leave me a comment telling me how did your students do with rocket balloons. Also, another thing you can do besides rocket balloons, you can also do rocket cars, uh, balloon cars, and I've done these with my students before also. These are fun and they're, they're different, but it's the same concept that they will understand. I hope you like this video and I hope you have a wonderful and blessed day.